I am the uh, state public health veterinarian for Maryland. Uh, basically, and what that entitles, you may ask, well, what is a public health veterinarian? Um, I'm the only veterinarian at Maryland Department of Health, but I'm the liaison between animal health and human health. So basically dealing with any of the diseases, um, basically what we call zoonotic, meaning going from animal to people or people to animals, I'd be helping deal with that. Um, and I use my veterinary uh, training not so much to treat animals, but to work with public health or to deal with population. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but uh, the education definitely plays a, a big role. Uh, four years of undergrad, uh, then we have four years of veterinary school and then to do public health you have to go on and get a master's in public health which is an additional two years. Uh, so for me that's the educational component. As far as the experience component I worked in clinical medicine which really helped a lot with dealing with um, diseases, my familiarity and, and basically the background or foundation I had with infectious disease and then I also worked with local health departments. Um, I worked uh, again with in the environmental health group dealing with food safety as well as mosquito-borne disease disease and that provided a lot of education or experience dealing with that and as you uh, continue in your career you're going to be able to uh, acquire a lot of that experience as you're kind of getting through it. Uh, there are formal training uh, programs as well. Uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has an epidemic intelligence service which is actually a, a two-year training program that veterinarians that are interested in public health can go on to do training for. Every state has either a designated state public health veterinarian or a core set of uh, public health professionals that perform those duties. So, so as the state public health veterinarian here in Maryland, I have epidemiologists that help me uh, keep track of the diseases, uh, do a lot of the counts, but also deal with uh, helping clinicians, uh, providing information and consultations for some of the uh, new and emerging infectious diseases, as well as some of the um, outbreaks and things that you've probably seen in the news recently. So, so as the state public health veterinarian, I'm kind of the, the point man or the liaison, but it's really the the staffing and everybody that can really work together. So. I was clinical based. I was going to work in the, either a zoo or do uh, private practice and pretty much that was the main um, kind of focus of my clinical education there. But as I started to really start to see the um, what veterinary medicine can provide. You know, the neat thing about being a veterinarian is there's so many different aspects to it. You know, you can go into clinical practice, you can go into uh, corporate medicine, you can go into government, um, you can go into research. And that's the really neat thing is as you explore one avenue, there's nothing stopping you from going into another. And that's exactly what I did. Um, you know, I used the clinical foundation and then expanded to the public health practice. And honestly, I am very happy. Um, you know, 14 years of clinical practice, I say this is my second job or my, you know, kind of after career here and, and I wouldn't change it. I love working with the state. I love the people that I work with as well as that interaction between the state and the local health departments. That's the really um, kind of captivating thing that really keeps me going. I love it. You know, there's a concept called One Health, in which we have animal health, uh, basically human health, and environmental health really intimately associated. And this job really takes into account all the different aspects of One Health and allows me to put it into practice. So that's, that's really what I love about it. You know, we're all intertwined. The environment, animals, and human health intimately affect each other. If you affect one, you're going to see consequences in the other. So really looking at that holistic approach. You know, as you go through and really work with your animals and the livestock or domestic animals, think, how does it relate to my health? How can I either affect their health? How can we work together to really ensure that everybody is going to be safe and, and healthy at this stage? Don't be afraid to hear the word no. Um, you ask, if you see an opportunity, go for it. Um, that was one of the things that I really wanted to um, kind of stress is I've been told no many, many times. And again, switching careers. People thought I was I was a little crazy to switch from a very um, established clinical career to go to an unknown or something that wasn't exactly what I started off in school with. But again, it's following your dreams and your passions and don't be afraid to, to really look for it. Because again, getting into veterinary school, it's difficult. It's not impossible. And again, you may fail, but keep trying. Really try to network. Really use the, utilize the resources that you have. Reach out to people. I always encourage, if you have questions or want to know more, let me know. You know, I have an open phone, open door policy. When I started out, I asked people questions. I reached out to say, hey, what, what are the opportunities? I remember sitting on the call after a long day of clinical practice, calling some of these veterinarians who work for government and say, how did you do this? You know, what were the ways, what were the pathways that really worked for you? And then utilizing that network and going from there. Um, there's an old saying, if you don't network, you don't work. 
So take advantage of that and really um, kind of work. It's scary getting out there, you know, asking questions, really starting to work. It can be intimidating, but utilize the people that you have and, and you'll go far. Thank you.